I grew up very much in a visual world, and I think my biggest memories as a child were going to the double feature in our movie theater on Saturday and then going across the street to the Paris News where my father was a photographer for the newspaper and spending time in the dark room. So all of that was so much a part of me that by the time I got to high school, I wanted to take photographs for the annual, you know, the school annual. Um, and by the time I got to university, I really thought maybe I wanted to be a reporter, but I realized how much I loved shooting and therefore photography became cinematography. When I got to New York, um, uh, I worked as a camera assistant and you know drove vans for filmmakers on documentaries. In the meantime, made money at Duart. Um, and then the union found themselves being uh, sued by, um, no, the networks found themselves being sued because they had no minorities whatsoever. And so the networks in turn looked at the union and the union had no minorities. So basically they were in a position to look for women, blacks, Hispanics that could actually be a part of the union so that they could then go work at the networks. So I passed the test and almost immediately went on staff at ABC News, which I did long enough to make enough money to buy my own film equipment and to buy my own lighting equipment because to shoot documentaries in New York in the 70s, you had to own your own equipment because you had to make a really cheap deal. So if you didn't own equipment, you didn't really get the jobs. You know, it was much harder to do. Things were happening in El Salvador and in Haiti and in Lebanon. And I got, you know, after Vietnam, I kind of became a war junkie. And if you're a documentary cinematographer, you will never find anything more exciting to film than war. Going to Los Angeles, I started all over again. Um, getting into the narrative industry, the five documentaries I had shot that had won Oscars meant absolutely nothing uh, because the narrative industry was something very different. I didn't really know what those 80 people on a film set did because in documentaries, I was used to doing my own lighting, carrying my camera. If I wanted a moving shot, I handheld it. If I wanted a high shot, I climbed up on a balcony. You know, I mean, I, we got the shots. We did it that way. I pulled my own focus. Um, it's why I kind of began as an operator. And then I began to see the gaffer and the gaffer's crew, the grip and the grip's crew, the production designer. And I would watch how this all worked with a script supervisor. So that by the time I had the opportunity to DP myself, I could sort of see this. The first narrative film that I shot, um, I was living in LA and my friend Mira Nair was going to do Salam Bombay and I suddenly became a little bit exotic because I was an LA director of photography coming to New York for an interview. Meanwhile, I still had an apartment in New York. But, you know, being a, a DP is so much about, you know, luck, but when the luck comes along, you know what you're doing and you, you know how to take that luck and go somewhere with it. We had a big actor strike in the early 2000s. And uh, during that actor strike, we were all out of work for many, many months. We had a similar situation a couple of years ago with the writer strike and then the SAG strike. During that period of time, um, we were all down and I was contacted by NYU Graduate School and uh, was asked if I would be interested in coming out at that point kind of as an artist in residence. I think I partied and hung out with my students a lot <laughs> because I thought of them as crew. I mean, it was important for me that they get to class on time the way that you would get to the set on time. It was important to me that they do pre-production before they got to class, the same way that you do it in the industry. So I think I ran the class very much like I run a film set. For many, many years, I would say, somebody would say, well, what are you? And I would say, a director of photography, but I also teach. Um, more and more and more, if somebody asks me what I do, I'm inclined to say I'm a professor 
of cinematography who's also a director of photography. Luckily, I found that mentoring students is something I truly enjoy. And every time one of my students wins a big award, I'm uh, thrilled. I'm really thrilled. And I feel that you live on in the industry by teaching young people what you know. I love cinema and I love photography and, um, and I, I would never want to retire from that.